What's up guys, so in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how custom resources work, and this will be a Godot 4.0 tutorial, so if you are using a previous version of Godot, some of these methods might not work as intended. But let's just get right into it. So, if you don't know what a custom resource is, it's essentially just a component or a file which has certain data which can be used at runtime by the game engine. For an example, let's say we had a new scene up here, and we added a sprite. If you look in the inspector on the right hand side, you'll see that the sprite requires a texture. Now, this texture object that we are supposed to load in here is actually a resource, right? Typically, you would use like an image texture, so this could be like a PNG or a JPEG or whatever but it will use that image texture, which is a resource. Now you can see, you can also create different kinds of resources, like you could make a curve texture or a gradient texture, and those are also all resources. Now, obviously I'm going to be going over how to create your own resources, which may seem daunting at first, but it's a very powerful system that is actually really important for developing games in Godot. So I'll show you how to do that for save files in this tutorial. We're going to be setting up a system for creating essentially a player save resource that will have all of our game data saved to it and then we can just save that resource to the disk load it back up and have all of our data i do highly recommend using resources to manage save files. I think I mentioned that in my last tutorial, but if you're deciding between a JSON file or a resource, I would always recommend using the resource file over the JSON file. And this is because it is a lot easier to import into the engine. So instead of importing your entire JSON file as a dictionary and then having to apply values, right? You could essentially just import your player data resource and then everything would already be set up. You'd already have all the methods you'd want, you'd already have all the properties you'd want, and everything would just work instantly. Another benefit on using resources is they can store sub-resources. So let's say our player data resource contained an inventory resource, and that inventory resource had different methods inside of it to add or remove items from the inventory. Now, you could call these methods on the resource class, right, which is the inventory, and then that would instantiate new item resources which could be added into that resource and those items could store things like all their item data their durability or something depending on what kind of a game you're making and basically all the metadata for the items and then when you save the parent of all these resources which in this case would be the player data resource then it would save all of those sub resources to that same file and when you load it back in all of those would be instantiated automatically and created in the same order they were saved obviously which is over the top helpful. Like if you were trying to do that with a JSON file, you'd kind of have to manually be instantiating all these classes and setting everything up when you load it to read everything correctly and decode it. But with resources, it's just incredibly useful. So I'm talking way too much about this. Let's just get right into how to do it, right? So first thing we need to do is make our player resource. So we're gonna go into my resources folder down here. We're gonna right click and make a new script. So all of our resources will be derived from a script class which we need to define first and then we can create instances of that as resources so create a new script we're going to call this player data.gd we can go ahead and open this and there are some requirements for creating the resources obviously so first of all you need to extend the resource class so instead of node we're going to replace this with resource and then we also need to define the class name so we can type class underscore name and we set it equal to player data now to define any properties in this resource we need to export the properties so if we wanted to define a health variable or property we would say at export var health equals and we'll set this to 100 and then we're also going to define a method in here which will be function and this will be called change health and we will require a value which will be an integer and this function will literally just be health plus equals value this is all we'll need for our player data resource for now so we can go ahead click Control s to save and now that is defined inside of our project now inside of our main.gd script which is just the main scene right up here which has all the buttons 
buttons attached, we'll need to set up obviously the basics of the system. So right at the top, I'm going to get the label first. You don't need to do this. This will be so we can update the visuals. We're going to define two new variables. One is going to be the save file path. And the next one is going to be the save file name. Now you have to save everything to the user directory and we're going to put it in the save folder inside of here. And then the file name will basically just be the player save, whoops, not Dave, <laughs> player save dot T-R-E-S. Next up, we need to create a new save file. So we will save our player data equals player data, which is defined in our engine dot new to create a new instance of this resource. And we now have our custom resource successfully loaded into our script. Now I'm gonna put this line right here in the ready function to verify our save directory. So we can pass in our file path here and I'm gonna actually create this function right down here. And all this is going to do is basically if the folder doesn't exist, where we're trying to save the file, we need to make it exist. Otherwise we're gonna get an error. So to do that, we can just call directory access dot make directory absolute and put the path right here. And then additionally up here, we need to update the label for the visuals. You don't have to do this, but I will create a new function here and add this down here, function update label. And all this is gonna do is just update the text. So we're gonna put this player health string and add it to the string of the player data dot health. Now all the basics are set up, so now we have to actually focus on loading the file and saving it. So when we press the load button, we need to get this file and assign it to our player data variable. So we just call player data equals resource loader dot load. And then we need to give the path, which we will actually be using the save file path right here and plus the save file name. And we are also going to duplicate this. Okay, so this line will load our file and assign it to this variable. Now we want to define the save function. Now we want to define how the saving works and it's pretty similar, but we want to call the resource saver dot save and we need to pass in the resource we are trying to save which is currently the player data and the path which is also this string right here which is our save file path plus our save file name and i guess i should have mentioned this for the file name you do want to include the extension which is tres for these resources <clears throat> And then last but not least, we need to be able to change the file, which is the health in this case. So when our health is pressed, we're going to call player data dot change health, and we're gonna pass in minus five, I think should work. And then after that, we want to update the label, and we will also update our label after all of these functions. Now, to keep this cleaner in your actual game, you'll want to define these all in their own methods, obviously, so that you're not sticking them everywhere you want to load a file or save a file. But for this tutorial, we are basically just putting them in here to create it faster and make it more simplified. But this is really the only line you'll need for loading. And this is the one you'll need for saving. So we're going to go ahead and run the game. We're going to load our, or we're going to change our health. We're going to save this, change it a bit more. And now when we load it again, it will revert to our original save, which is 75. So that's all working correctly. As you can see, this was a really simple system for using custom resources. But if you stick around, I'll show you a couple more tricks, which might be helpful to you. So first of all, if you're wondering, we can go into the path where we saved the file by going to the project um, open user data folder. And this will bring us to this folder where we can go into our save file, which we defined in our script and open this player save.tres file. I'm just gonna open it with the text editor. And and this is essentially how the file is encoded, right? Or structured rather. But you can see that our export variable here is saved. Now we can actually make this file a bit more complicated. Let's say we had in the player data, we had a new at export var, which was our inventory. We're gonna set this equal to a new array. We could actually add sub resources inside of this inventory and they would all save with their individual properties to the same file, which is just 
incredible, right? So I'm gonna go down into resources again. We're gonna make a new script. This will be our item resource. So we're gonna call this item.gd, open this up, make sure it extends resource, and we're gonna define the class name as item. So I'm gonna add this new variable at the top, which needs to be an export variable, and it will be called item name. Now, initially we're going to set this to undefined by default, but we will set this manually when we create a new item instance. So to set this up, we want to define an initiation function, which will be called function underscore init. And we're gonna pass in here for now, but what we wanna do is pass in some values when we initiate or instance a new item class. And that value will just be the item name that we want to create, which will be added to the inventory. So basically we're gonna say item name. And the one thing you need to note for the init function inside of these classes is when you're instancing a new resource, you need to have a defined value for any parameters inside of here. If you just say item name is a string, you're going to get an error when you try to load this resource because it does not have a value for this parameter, right? So basically we need to use the equals function to set a default value that it can always revert to in case one is not provided. Provided, and then this will not throw an error for the constructor upon initialization. By default, we'll set it to undefined, right? But this will obviously be different when we create an item and all we need to do is set our item name, export variable up here, equal to the item name property right here. So now we have our item resource and inside of our main.gd, we can make a new button to add an item to our inventory. So I'm gonna create a new button here. This will be add item. And with the signal connected on the add item button, we need to call a function inside of the player data class that will add an item to the inventory. So first of all, we need to define that in our player data script. So going to here, we'll make a new function called add item to inventory, and we will require the item name, which will be a string. And all we need to do on here is call inventory.append, and we will append a new item. So we type item dot new. And for this new function, we defined a couple parameters we need to pass in upon initialization. So we will pass in the item name, which will be the item name inside of this function. And then it will create a new item. So back inside of our main.gd script, and then we can just call this function right here. So player data dot add item to inventory and we'll add an apple as an item. Okay, let's run the game. We're gonna go into the remote tab to see all of our live data. We have the player data resource here. We're gonna open this up on the right hand side. We have our health and our inventory has nothing in it. So if we go into our game, we can say add item, click this. It will add a new apple to our inventory. So you can see this apple item is actually another resource, which is inside of our player data resource. So if we click this, and we will see that it's another resource here. It has an item name, which is apple. And we can actually add a couple of these. Um, I'm gonna go back in here. We have an array of three of these apples now. And when we save this file, I'm actually gonna change the health too. We're gonna save this file. And if we go back into the save file, you can see that it saved all of our sub resources in this file as well. So here's a sub resource and we have our export variable, which is apple. And when we load this, obviously we load all of our data and all the items in our inventory are automatically instantiated per resource and defined in there. So you can see that this system is incredibly powerful, right? And again, I would recommend using it over a JSON file for stuff like this because it is just so straightforward to load and everything just seems to work perfect. So, <laughs> and it's just, it, it's just really nice. I really like um, custom resources, but it is also a good thing to use JSON files sometimes. For example, in the game I'm currently working on, I have a JSON file with all of my items data, and this is essentially the default data. So when I add a new item to the inventory, instead of passing in all the items parameters here, I would just pass in the items ID, which would then refer to an item in my dictionary, in my JSON file, and and it will get the item's ID, grab all of its data, assign the data to the item resource inside of its own export dictionary. And this would make it so that I can actually edit each individual item 
inside of the game and then save it to the save file. So since my game is a roguelike game, I can use this to basically let the player pick up a sword that would have a baseline for all of its data. And then I could alter any of this data however I wanted, save it to the player's save file and not even change the original data, which is still defined as the baseline inside of my JSON file. So I like to use this in combo with uh, JSON since JSON is still really good for like a database. Um, I like to use it for stuff like that instead of creating a resource with all of my exports for all of my item data and then creating a separate resource for every single item. Uh, just seems really inefficient to me. So that's why I like to use them in tandem. But yeah, that's about it for this video. I did want to get this video out to you guys today, so I hope it helped and I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing as I post game development content consistently on this channel, and I would recommend not missing it since most of it is pretty swish. But yeah, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.